Um, headphones. Hang them headphones. Can anyone hear me is the question. Let's see if I can get my other camera set up here. You hear it? I wonder if you're hearing, hopefully you're hearing through the headphones. Let me check right quick here. Yeah. Uh, looks like it's connected here. Now that is the wrong camera. Hey, hey. Waiting for a few more folks to join here before we get started. I wonder if this thing records automatically. Any of you guys ever done a YouTube Live? I have never touched it. That chewing is horribly annoying. I will stop. I just haven't gotten dinner yet. I got carried away doing some um, wood turning here in the shop. And uh, time got away from me. Almost missed what I was trying to do here. All right. It's going to have trouble getting the t table in on this too. Oh, hey, hey. Dude, those blowers are awesome. The Mickey blowers are kick ass. Oh, how you guys doing tonight? Getting by? Hey, hey. I got my phone set up, so unfortunately I'm not going to be able to respond to any of the comments, you guys. Uh, otherwise, if I, if I happen to read it, I'll try and uh, get back to you vocally. Um, how's that top handle saw holding up for you? I've not been real happy with it. My, I've, I just got one recently. I've actually got the Husqvarna top handle, a battery saw, at least the old one. I haven't gotten the new one. But um, the, oh, the new Husqvarna is like three times as expensive as the Makita. I could literally buy three to one Makita saws uh, to for the rather than the Husky. And they're not that different as far as I can tell, at least in sheer power. But the... Uh, the actual, it seems to me that the batteries on the Huskies seem to run a little bit better. They don't shut off quite as easily as the Makitas. I've had some issues, especially in the cold. 10 p.m. Dang, you staying up late? That would be bedtime for me. Twelve inch Sugi. Yep, five zero. Shrink that gauge down. If you can get the skinniest gauge you can get on those top handle saws, it makes such a difference. Yep. Yeah, the lightest, the lighter weight makes all the difference on those things. You probably love one of the little, uh, it was the 2511, the Echo. That thing is so tiny. And guys like August have hopped them up, uh, increase the compression, blow out the uh, exhaust a little bit bigger. And those little tiny 2511s by Echo rip. Um, they're way lighter than the Makita top handle, but at least it's no more, no more pull starting. You've joined the club. Just wait just another minute or two here and I'll, I'll bust out these guys. For those of you who haven't seen, this is the notch fusion tether with the uh, rope wrench. Now it doesn't come with this, which is kind of a bummer. Hey, hey from Ontario, good to see ya. Um, as far as your question about the 194T, uh, I've, that's the, that's the still electric. I haven't heard good things. That's the only one I haven't played with of all the major brands of electrics. But um, I watched a video that August put out a while back when it first came out, he got a demo unit and it was, 
pretty gutless as far as he could tell, and so I just haven't even messed with it. I don't I don't have any preferences for hitch cord. I just get something that's burn resistant. Um, I don't actually climb with hitch cord often at all. So I've got just a couple of randos. I just like to get short ones. I just, I'm almost always by the shortest ones I can find. You know, I think this is probably a 30. I'm not sure how I ended up with this one, but almost always I go with a 28 inch. Yeah, it's a 32, so it's kind of a long one. But I like this, um, the rougher, I like my hitch cord a little rougher with a Technor on the outside. Um, because I, I tend to keep my ropes, I, I tend to change them out pretty regularly, so they're usually fairly slippery. So if I'm going to use a hitch cord, it's not going to be on a slippery climb rope, and I don't like I don't like the slip slidiness. So, um, the I'll, I'll reiterate this a few times around. I'm going to dive in here because who knows what else is going to happen. <laughs> um, hey Tom, good to see you. The um, I've been a longtime user of the zigzag. As far as a, a device, just like a, a multi-purpose device and as a beginner's climb device, I can't speak highly enough for it. This thing just is, is killer um, because I've basically any rope I put in here, all of the standard arborist ropes, Ivy, all the Teufelberger ropes, the um, like the ecstatic adrenal line uh, I've used, um, I guess the, what's the other one besides the Ivy? There's a, rope, a couple different Ivy ropes. Um, there's a Samson rope I've used. Basically, any rope I've tried, this thing works smoothly on it, even when it gets all gummied up and nasty. So it's a great device. Now, obviously, I've actually I started out using just your standard rope branch tether. This is the this is kind of an old one, old rope logic stiffy. It's got the two tabs. You can see the length difference on these two. They're um, it's probably as, as far as to where the where the actual um, I don't know if you could see that. Where the actual carabiner goes to the rotation point, it's not that different. They're really similar in length. So that's the, one of the first things I noticed about this particular tether is that it's, it's long. Like it's actually quite long. And I suspect you could probably, those of you guys who, who are a little bit bigger and tie with longer hitch cords, put more wraps on, um, you might actually find that you like uh, you might, it should probably still work. I would guess I typically, like I said, I, I like to use real short hitch cord. Um, and I don't wrap that many times. I'm, I'm a pretty small guy. If, if I'm putting more than four wraps on a distal hitch, then I've got a really slippery rope or I'm trying to just use up space, but the length shouldn't be a problem. One of the key advantages of this and this system, one of the things I really like about it over, let's just say the, the Petzl zigzag with the chicane it's, it's hard to describe I, that's why i want to do this video i got to demonstrate for you so the the petzl and the chicane they've got a they're designed to mate to each other right so with the chicane you have to have the petzl specific carabiner and one and part of this design there's this little rubber keeper and the hole right in here i'm going to show both of these cameras the hole right in here let me take this carabiner out is um is designed expressly to fit the shape of this carabiner the carabiner profile it's got the little groove in the middle it's kind of narrow if you can see here this has got a very similar profile i'm reaching over the other camera now i'll show you guys here very similar profile there we go i can see it better a little light in the back um but what I, and the, the point of that, the advantage of that situation is that this carabiner, it, it allows the, the chicane to be held up by the carabiner. So when this is loaded, you know, the rope is holding, is going through these links and it's supporting it from the top side and you're pulling down here, it naturally stays upright, doesn't flop around. So, I mean, that's one of the complaints with this particular tether. If it's on a rope, even if you've got a stiffy tether, Somewhere in here, there's some flexibility. And so that tends to, to sag. And so a lot of times it'll just create more sit back. That's the main thing is, is the sit back. You want this thing to tend real close to your chest. You want it to move up when you do and, and set as soon as you sit down because that saves you the most energy. Let me slide that one back. But what I found is that uh, this particular connection and this connection right here, because they're in a fixed place, I will frequently be maneuvering in a tree trying to get better positioning. 
And I can find, I put a lot of torque on this union right here. Um, because the way it's locked in, if I, I, I feel like I could just break this by hand if I tweak it weird. Like, I'm sure it's stronger than that, but it's it's got that, uh, it gets narrow right here. And the way that that connection is, I know I could force this around and it's gonna do damage either to the inside of that or it's gonna do damage to the carabiner. And I don't know which is gonna give first, but it enable, it's, a, it's a little bit of a loose connection that enables weird torques. Um, and then of course this is all rigid throughout. Same thing with its connection here. If I, if I tweak this hard off to the side or sometimes if that gets caught like that, um, just the way these things kind of fit snug but kind of don't uh, makes them liable to, to take a weird torque. And, I, and I, I have yet to see any literature on any of these failing. So this could just totally be my sense of it. But as, as someone who really pays attention to the engineering of things, I suspect that's a weak link and I don't like it. The other thing is other people have noted is that when you go to collapse this, say you're, you're trying to limb walk out, um, this chicane often adds too much friction to the system. So you go, you go to limb walk out, and even if you're releasing this all the way, the chicane is still grabbing, and, and it adds enough friction to where it can make it difficult to limb walk, especially on like a real thin limb or where you have to, you're really trying to balance well and you, you end up having to pull harder on your climb line than you would otherwise want to do. Um, and so that's, uh, that's one of the big complaints about the chicane specifically. And then the last thing, this spring mechanism is great. This one's a little bit worn out. Um, but what we found is if you, if you need to take slack to say do a, a, a retrievable redirect, um, I like one where I tie a hitch, or I, I pass a bite around the tree and I tie a couple half hitches to it and then I can retrieve it later. Um, if you need to pull a bunch of slack through, it can be a pain because I can't collapse this, um, I can't collapse the petzl here and hit this with one hand together. And so if I'm trying to pull, um, this is, those you can't, this is the petzl zigzag and the, and the chicane. Um, I can't collapse the petzl all the way and pull this down in order to pull slack out at the same time. Uh, I can't do it all with one hand. My hands aren't big enough, they're too far apart. And so what you end up having to do is taking it out of the chicane, taking the rope out, then using one hand, pulling the slack out and then reconnecting it. It's a minor thing, but I found it, it's one of those things that, that that particular weakness combined with the fact that um, it's just long, like the, the length from, from my tying point uh, to where this thing sits. But when, once my, my bridge is pulled up and I'm sitting in it, it tends to sit right about here, right in my face. And so it's just a little bit long. So I don't, I don't use this very often anymore, um, even if I do like this. So that's, I wanna, that's one of the, things, the points I wanted to make about this. The way this does this differently is, is really interesting, right? So uh, I'm gonna try and do these, compare them to one another in a way that hopefully can make sense. You'll have to visualize it because I don't have this hung up. Maybe I will get a rope hung up in here. So unlike the Petzl where the bottom carabiner is, uh, so this is the, this is the one you sit on. This carabiner is the one that can be loaded weird and you get a funky torque on it. In with the, the notch fusion tether, you don't have this secondary carabiner. So you don't have that weak point and you don't have the potential for a weird torque. On the fusion tether, you know, the, the hitch cord is what acts like the links on in the petzl. And then this one carabiner is all you need to attach to your harness. Um, and I found that if I'm not, if I don't use the ring on my harness, uh, so the bridge goes left and right, if I clip this so that it faces this way and I clip it underneath my harness, then the, the whole system will actually stay oriented one direction or the other. So if you're left-handed, you can keep it oriented this way. Um, if you're right-handed, I, I keep it oriented this way. And, it, and the nice thing about that is it sits a little bit tighter, lower, lower into my body, a little bit less out of my viewing uh, range. And, and then you also, because this is a loose connection with this carabiner, it slides around rather than torquing. It's not. It's a. It's a big enough opening here that you can't. You can't just leverage it very easily um, to to into a weird position, and it's beefy. 
it's just a, a much beefier construction, single piece uh, all the way through, which I like. I just, it, it inspires more confidence in my opinion. And um, I, it was, it's actually beefier than I thought it was going to be when I looked at it. I saw this cast aluminum and I figured it was going to be just like the chicane, but it's quite a bit, quite a bit heftier. And I, and I trust it. I really like it. There is a, a question there and I want to see if I can get to that. I have the same rope as Hyperclimb, just different colors. Not sure. System seems very long. Yeah, this is actually shorter than, than this when it's all said and done. Because uh, if you look, like I said, this bottom carabiner is the one where it attaches to your harness. And on this guy, it's this carabiner attached to your harness. So it's actually another you know two inches longer than the whole Petzl setup. I, I always recommend this to new climbers. Um, I don't necessarily tell them to buy the chicane. I don't, I don't think that's necessarily their, 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 the best way to get into single rope from, uh, from having the zigzag. But the zigzag as a beginning device for, uh, and its ability to be converted over to a single rope system easily after learning moving rope systems, um, and the fact that it's so versatile, it doesn't get gummed up with sap, it's, it's great. I like it. But it's not necessarily my first pick. Anyway, so I want to talk a little bit about this guy in comparison too. So uh, one of the, obviously the alternative to this tether, there's a couple of them on the market. Uh, Rion Rounds, I don't know if you guys know him, hit him up on Instagram. At Rion Rounds, has got a great Arborist Instagram. He's, he's just a, a cool guy. Uh, uh, good, I'll see if I can answer that later. So Rion Rounds is killer. He actually designed his own tether that's a lot like this. It doesn't have the pulley built in, um, but it has the spring-loaded top. So one of the big differences between the standard stiffy tether and the fusion tether is this little bit of spring-loaded uh, action on the rope wrench. So the advantage of that spring-loading, for those of you who maybe aren't as familiar with single rope, i got to grab, pardon me just a second, got to grab a rope here. Having that single rope or having that little bit of spring action can make a big difference. Let's see. Need something to hang this on. Ugh. See me screwing around my garage here. Uh, for the guy who asked, what are these devices for? They are for work, uh, climbing, positioning, they're for um, high angle rope access, arborist specific kind of work. It lets you go up and down a rope while staying tied in at all times without having to tie new knots. Okay, uh, spring and the rope tether. Okay, so what I was gonna show you guys, now that I've got a little rope hanging here, if I don't have, or if I've got a spring in the rope tether, if I slide this thing up, the it ten, it, the rope wrench go, comes down, but when I sit in it, it kinks it, right? Well, if I don't have the spring in it, then it stays hanging just a little more vertical, which lets it slide up and down by itself. Because there's a little bit of a spring in there, it grabs. So it creates a more consistent uh, setting action. And that's kind of the point of that little spring. It's, seen, it's a small detail. It's a very subtle spring. It doesn't have much action to it, but it makes a big difference. I'm going to grab that other rope wrench here and show you. So I've got this other rope wrench. This is the first one I bought. I actually, after I got that fusion tether, I tried to take this off and put it on here, and I stripped out the bolt really bad. <laughs> so I had to get another one. Um, here you go. So the idea with this, same general idea, as long as I'm nice and vertical, it tends okay and it grabs just fine. So this, I mean, it functions fairly well. What I, what tends to happen though, is that I'll be over here and you can see how that just fell. Um, this, this part, because it's all kind of floppy, if I get off at an angle, this will tend to drop like that rather than staying up and put above the hitch. And so I might sit back in my hitch and uh, if the hitch grabs, I'll probably end up putting a lot more force in the hitch 
than it's designed to because those of you who maybe are a little bit new to climbing you're like well why don't we just climb on the hitch well that's you know that's what we're trying to avoid is just climbing on the hitch if you use the hitch by itself it ends up jamming up so tight that uh, after you put your full weight in it that it just becomes impractical to use right so here's your standard it's a distal hitch right so i can put a certain amount of force and have it not uh, not lock up on me real bad but if i'm going to put my whole body weight on that what i'm going to find is this thing cinches really tight and it's no fun to use I don't know why this isn't exactly the point of this conversation, but I figured I'd at least bring you all up to speed. If any of you guys are out there trying to climb a single line by itself with just the hitch cord, you need to stop <laughs> and, that, and get one of these devices because it makes sense. Makes it not looks like a much more responsive system. That's, that's a, basically what it comes down to, right? So if you're looking at this, this device, this rope wrench device was revolutionary because what it does when I, when I sit in my hitch, that device adds friction to the system. <laughs> It makes it much more, even with this totally collapsed, it still is quite a bit of effort to get that to extend. Now, when I go to go up, this hitch cord uh, doesn't want to slide up easily without a pulley underneath it. So you ideally, you know, in your standard hitch climber system, you've got a little tending pulley right here that helps slide the hitch cord up. Now, see how this doesn't have a, um, it doesn't have a spring. So when I slide this down, Sometimes that just drops. Like right now, it's not by, it's not grabbing on the rope. Um, that's where you want to see as the hitch comes down, but it doesn't always do that, and that's because there's no spring. So the notch fusion tether solves both of those problems. Uh, it solves the the pulley the pulley at the bottom problem by adding a little pulley at the bottom. It makes it, there's this cool little swivel system too. So you don't ever you're never risking dropping a pulley if you got to take your your system off mid go, so it kind of stays attached. Oops, let's see here. Got that moved around. Yeah, so the system stays attached. You're never going to drop this pulley unless you drop the whole device. And then this little spring load system makes it just more responsive, as you said, more likely to grab as you sit down rather than to just fall down with you and end up putting all your weight and binding up your hitch. So as I release that, it always grabs. So if I, if I pull that down, a little bit of spring there keeps it, from, keeps it grabbing. So it ends up being really nice. So I use this the last couple of days. I don't generally climb with hitches. I'll just say that right now. I'm just not much of a hitch guy. Um, I've got mechanicals. I keep my ropes clean. I really like how fast things like the akimbo and the rope runner come off and on the ropes. So I don't tend to use hitches that much. I deal with a lot of sappy trees too. And as soon as you get one of these hitch cords sapped up real bad with our, our pitchy pines, then they end up functioning really poorly. But a lot of guys love hitch cords. Um, one of my climbers I'm training, he's just all about it. He loves it. He, he ordered this recently. I think he's going to really like it. If you are a hitch cord climber and you don't have any single rope device, you don't have a, a rope wrench or a tether yet, this is, I would recommend this. I, I think it's a good way to go. It's a little bit pricey. Um, this combination here, it's about 140 bucks, I think, for the, um, if I remember correctly, for the actual rope wrench. And then this tether itself is like another 40 or 50 bucks. So you're almost at $200 just for this. At, at a carabiner, you will be over $200. Um, add another pulley because you got to have the pulley. The pulley is about 60 bucks on its own. So 60 bucks plus 40. So you're about a hundred bucks plus this plus hundred. So 250 bucks for a proper hitch cord setup with a regular stiffy tether. And if you want to get the notch fusion tether, it's 150 bucks for the tether and then another 140 for this. So it's, it's like another $50 more overall than setting up with like a standard tether, which you need. You got to have a tether with the rope wrench, but it's, um, but you do end up with a sleeker, more responsive, kind of easier to work with system that I think, I think you'd probably find that that 50 bucks is, is well worth it if you're insistent on using hitch cords. So that was most of what I wanted to cover. Um, I'm totally going to take some questions now if you guys got something burning. The big thing I wanted to point out overall, just to hit it one more time for anyone who maybe has just joined, is that the chicane 
works only with Petzl carabiners. So if you don't have Petzl carabiners, you'll have to buy one of those too. And it has a what I think to be a, a, a flaw in the design. And I know they did it intentionally. I know it's to keep this thing vertical, um, but the fact that the spring's a little bit too strong, you can't pull slack out. And the fact that this, this particular connection point right here is prone to, to side loading and weird torque if you're climbing through the tree, um, makes me hesitant to recommend the chicane as a solution for turning things into a, a single rope device. Now, you can't use this. <laughs> now, here's the kind of the sad thing, right? You can't use this notch um, fusion tether with the zigzag. So if you already are committed to the zigzag system, check out Rion Rounds' tether. That thing is kick-ass. It is awesome. So I guess I should swear it's probably, I don't think I'm on 18 plus only here at the YouTube streaming. But, um, but yeah, so if you're already committed to, to, to zigzag, which I know that's a lot of guys' first mechanical, it's awesome. Uh, go with the Rion Rounds tether or get yourself a good stiffy tether um, and you'll, you'll find that that works well for you. So I'm going to go through some of these little YouTube questions here and see if I can't hit a few of them while we're, while we're live. Uh, do, 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 all messages visible. Uh, something using just a hitch and a figure eight. Someone else just climbing with hitch. I always wonder if it's practical. Okay, so that you're probably talking about the old single rope technique. Um, uh, what do they used to call it? There was it was it used to be a part of the climbing competitions um, where you would just have a you have a hitch. You could go up. Wow, I can't foot locking. It's the old foot locking technique. It's fast. It's efficient. It takes a lot of technique and it is brutally hard to do. Uh, very few people ever use it anymore. Now with the if you've got a, like I use a Haas and a foot ascender, so a knee ascender, foot ascender, it's way more efficient, easier to deal with, uh, more reliable, love it. I'm a uni guy. Yeah, yeah, I got a uni too. Um, I don't like how the rope pops out of the bottom, pops out of the top. I don't think I'm going to keep using it. How do you keep ropes clean and mechanical devices with sap? Mechanical devices are easy. Most any solvent, uh, you want to use one that's, that's friendly to, to the plastic bits but most any solvent will get it out. I don't have, um, I don't do anything with my ropes. I just run them in oak. Uh, once it's really sappy, I pretty much stop using it or I only use it in a pine tree. And then if it gets bad, I will send it. Um, I'll just use it in an oak tree for a while. And that tends to burn the sap off over time. What's better, the Rope Runner Pro or the Akimbo? Is the Akimbo worth buying? Oh, there's a good question. So I actually have a, uh, I think I have a video on my channel about the Rope Runner Pro and the Akimbo, and I compare them. Here's the two devices. I'll show you. I'll go over it really quick. I these are are by far my most often used devices. Um, I'll start with the Akimbo because it's the most basic. In it, if you don't have pitchy trees, so if you're not frequently in pitchy trees, like with lots of sticky sap, this is a fantastic device. I really like it. It's very compact. It's super simple. Um, it's fast and easy to adjust to change from rope to rope. Um, once you figure out how it adjusts, because it's a little bit tricky and it, it, it takes some dialing in, once you figure out the, the trick to it, um, it's awesome. Uh, it just, it's fantastic. I, I use this a lot uh, as long as I've got fresh, clean ropes. As soon as there's sap on the rope, You'll be coming down, you'll stop dead, and you'll sit here and yank on this thing until you drop, you know, and start free falling. Uh, and then it's going to be like that until the sap gets cleaned out of this thing and off your rope. So as soon as the rope is sappy, it's, it's useless. So by itself, as your only mechanical, I wouldn't buy it. I don't think it's, it's, not, it's not a great device just for that. If you've got something to use when you're in a pitchy tree, you, you've got the zigzag, which is awesome with pitchy ropes or you've got the rope right or heck, you've got a hitch that you're willing to sacrifice, whatever. Um, then as a second device, it's awesome. Love it. Single rope, double rope, I go back and forth all the time. Very frequently, I will go up, uh, access single line, switch over double line. Both of these do that really well. The rope runner, I have found, um, it doesn't adjust as easy, right? So you need an Allen key to actually adjust it. I have found a happy medium setting. It, it's kind of right, right? Uh, in between the two and the three, a little closer to the three. So it's right in the middle of the adjustment range. And it works for pretty much all of my ropes. It's a little bit fast running on my, on my thinner, softer ropes. 
And it's a little bit hard on my thicker, fatter ropes like my Samson um, Voyager and, or with my, um, what's another one I've got? Mercury is a little bit thick, uh, but it's, so it's, it's, it's not a perfect setting for all of them, but it, I can pretty much put it on any rope and trust that it's going to work. Sap does make it sticky and does make it a little bit inconsistent to use, but not nearly so much as the akimbo. It's still totally, totally practical. Um, so I, I like this device a lot. So this, this would probably be my second most used. And that's only because I've got newer ropes right now that haven't been, I haven't done many nasty sticky pine trees. And I've got ropes that are dedicated to going in those trees. If I'm going to be in a, a nasty sticky pine tree, very often, um, if I'm not craning it, I'll, I'll use this device. So uh, I hope that answers your question. They, they have their, their pros and cons. I like the, com the compact nature of this. I like the ease of use, the adjustability. Um, I I like the fact that this doesn't die and sap. <laughs> the Akimbo could be nice. It is nice on spar work. It's usually it's um, it takes a little getting used to how often on it is, but it totally works well. Um, I like that it's because it's so small, uh, and oftentimes I'll use a uh, a quickie, a notch quickie, to choke my climb line around a spar, especially if I'm doing crane work. Um, I'll, I'll choke it, slide off the Instagram. I know that YouTube's kind of hogging the, the question group here.